This stunning photograph shows a pilot ejecting from a Vought F-8 Crusader, a single-engine carrier-based jet capable of supersonic speeds. During a crash landing, the pilot bravely manages to eject at the very last second using his Martin Baker Model F-5A ejection seat. He survived the mishap uninjured. For decades, the aircraft carrier has been a critical player in war. In the early 1960s, the vessel reached a new level of potency when the angled deck was introduced to accommodate new supersonic jets like the Vought F-8. This series of photos prove why the angled deck was so useful for new jet-powered technology. Without it, the results for this pilot would have been fatal. The aircraft carrier has been the most potent warship for generations. Since 1911, the deck plan for aircraft carriers had a single runway with the planes stored at one end. The first planes were catapulted into the air and away from the ship. Later, landing planes were stopped with arrestor wires and with the help of barricades. This meant accidents were prevalent given the timing of the landing was crucial for a safe landing. When the jet-powered airplane came into the picture, it was a game-changer for carriers. These aircraft were much heavier than previous models and had a higher landing speed. To complete a safe landing, the jets needed as much deck available as possible. How could a carrier plane create more runway space for these new aircraft? In a vertical carrier deck, they could either launch or land the planes, but not at the same time. Although extending the carrier's size seems like the most obvious choice, this wouldn't work for several reasons. For starters, the issue remained of how to stop the jets if they missed the arrestor cables. Fewer aircraft could be parked in the carrier with the thick barriers put on the deck's front. In the winter of 1944, Captain Dennis Campbell from the British Royal Navy came up with a new idea of angling the landing deck. After hearing from a senior Royal Navy officer that jets were the future of naval aviation, Campbell knew their higher speeds would require modified carriers. This skewed deck invention would give the jets enough room for landing, and if they missed the wires, they could try again and again. The use of the barrier became an absolute last resort. The angled landing decks were an effective way of making arrested landings safer. It was the safest and less costly option. After the first trials were done, on simulated repainted ship decks, the first actual carriers with angled decks were the USS Antietam in 1953 and the HMS Centaur in 1954. Soon after the successful tests, every carrier commander wanted to have their own angled deck. Now that the angled deck allowed jets to land, it also made carriers deadlier and more effective. They could finally launch and land aircraft simultaneously. The area to starboard of the new runway gave a bigger parking space for other aircraft, their recoveries, parking, refueling, and rearming. Although this new deck concept seemed simple, the already existing carrier's conversion to have angled decks required several structural alterations. For example, loss of the armament compartments and the addition of new deck supports mounted on the port beam. On October 21st, 1961, these photos capture the moment when a Vought F-8 Crusader from Fighter Squadron 11 attempted to land aboard the USS Franklin D. Roosevelt. During the landing, the main gear strut on the Vought F-8 snapped. The magnesium strut ignited, and the jet rolled off the end of the angled deck. Still, the pilot managed to bail out at the very last second, using his Martin Baker F-5A ejection seat. When the Martin Baker Company heard about these impressive photographs, they took advantage of the successful ejection. The company went on to use the photos in a successful ad campaign. The F-8 Crusader was a single-engine, supersonic, carrier-based jet aircraft built by Vought. It was used in the U.S. Navy, the Marine Corps, and was even used by the French Navy. Although this air superiority fighter performed exceptionally well, so much so that over a thousand of them were produced in total, it had its fair share of accidents. F-8s were notoriously difficult to put down on carriers, as they were unstable at high sink rates. Carriers had to power full steam ahead in order to give pilots more margin for error to stick the plane on the flight deck. But even when down in the carriers, the F-8s would not be out of trouble. The nose gear design was problematic, and it was often difficult to keep the F-8s on a straight line. <laughs> 